So Cassie, these are her words, said that she had like every fat person's nightmare happen to her on a plane. Uh, I always get uncomfortable. I still get uncomfortable hearing the word fat. Uh, you have embraced it, though. And you said, don't look at it like an ugly word. No, I mean, and I definitely think it can be used as an insult. So I'm, I'm not trying to tell people, like, don't be offended if someone calls you fat. It's just, it's an adjective. Thin, no one gets offended. Usually if you're like, oh, you're thin. Oh, you're blonde. Oh, you have blue eyes. So fat is just describing a body. And I think when you start to look at it in that way, it makes conversations about weight a lot easier. And it also takes the power away from the word. Mm. When someone tries to insult you with it, you can be like, yes, thank you, Captain Obvious. <laughs> and you have brown hair, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's just, for me, it's trying to reclaim the word. And for a lot of others too, who are overweight, reclaiming the word and being like, all right, so it's a word. It can't hurt me. It doesn't have any power. That sounds healthy. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I mean, I'm trying. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> but, um... It's always a complicated issue. And I had something that happened to me on a plane recently. And I'm so conflicted on how to feel. And I I actually, I credit the years of work that I've done on this as well. Because I've done a lot of work on body acceptance. But also the Lexapro that I'm on for <laughs> making me not really like worry about it so much. Isn't it wonderful how it takes the edge off something a little bit when it, you need it? It has been. I feel like my old self again. Oh, I cannot right. tell you like... I still have the anxiety sometimes. It's still there, but it's manageable. I feel lighthearted. My marriage is better. Like, it's it's been awesome. Anyway, back to the story. I'm on a plane, and going on the out flight, I sat in a seat, and I put the seat belt on, and it was, ex like, all the way extended, and it still clipped, but it was tight. And I was like, hmm, that's the first time that's happened to me. And then on the return flight, I sat in the seat and immediately as I sat down, I was like, this is going to be bad because my butt squeezed in between of the the like side mm -hmm. uh, armrests of this seat. So I'm trying to get into your head and your heart as you're walking towards the plane or down the aisle of the plane. Are you already having anxiety before you sit down? No, because I've never had any problems on flights okay. before, like ever. Um, and I also know like I have... Not for this reason, but I have really been working on myself. I've lost weight. I've been exercising daily or at least like four times a week. Um, my eating's a lot better. So I'm feeling really confident. And I'm like, I know I'm making good, healthy choices for myself. It doesn't change the fact that I'm fat, but like I don't feel some kind. So I don't have any trepidation. But I sit down and I'm like, oh, God. Oh, well, whatever. It is what it is. And then I go to buckle the seatbelt. And it just... It doesn't even touch like it's it's not buckling. And if I were going to buckle it like it would be I don't even know that I could squeeze it in there. And so I'm like, oh, God, this is, you know, for a lot of fat people, this is a nightmare. But there are influencers on TikTok who show you how easy it is to ask for a seatbelt extender. And I'm like, you know what? It is what it is. I'm changing my thinking. It's not my fault that the plane is not accommodating to me and people of my size, because I feel like this is a tight seatbelt. This is the first time it's happened. So I just very casually asked the flight attendant, I'm like, hey, can I get a seatbelt extender, please? And without judgment, she's like, yeah, I'll grab you one. All right. So when you ask that, are you um, aware of people around you in your head? Do you feel like the whole plane heard that? I'm hyper aware. Uh -huh. um, I had to push myself to not whisper it because yeah. I'm like, if I whisper it, it makes it into a thing. Right. Mm -hmm. If I just ask, if anyone overhears it, they'll be like, oh, well, n n won't think twice about it. But in my head, I'm like, I'm praying that the flight attendant isn't like, what did you say? Or, huh? You know, like shocked. She handled it professionally. Yeah, I'll grab you one. For the record, I was sitting next to Kat, like the aisle over because we got lucky. We had empty seats next to us on the, on the flight. Um, and I was un I was completely unaware of anything going on. But this is where the nightmare happens. So for me, I'm like, wow, that really wasn't as bad as I was expecting. I was expecting to feel awful about myself and to be so embarrassed. And it wasn't bad. She brings it back and she goes, um, there's a policy on the plane that if you're using a seatbelt extender, you can't sit in the ex exit row. And so now I'm very matter of fact, she wasn't rude. She wasn't sugarcoating it, just doing her job. And is she like, I'm trying to figure out this whole scene. So it, does she like almost whisper this to you or is very matter of fact? Very matter of, not okay. loud, not embarrassing, not hush hush whisper. But not insensitive either. No, literally okay. what I would have wanted, honestly. She is just doing her job and I appreciate that. She is not coddling me. She's not embarrassing me, just doing her job. So she's not yelling on the plane. Okay. I got the extender! 
<laughs> no, but she hands me the extender, and now uh-huh. I have to do the walk of shame. Oh, no. Out of the exit row, uh-huh. trying to get my bags. The whole plane is seated, holding the seatbelt extender in my hand as I walk toward the back of the plane where she's reseated me. And that's where you sat next to me, so I didn't know. Like, that wasn't okay. Yeah. Did you feel like everybody on that plane knew the reason why you were moving, or? No, I don't think anyone knew, but I knew, uh-huh. and so... But what surprised me is, like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, this is the literal nightmare of how this could have, I mean, it could be worse, but unfolded. Like, I already had to ask for the extender, and now I'm doing a walk of shame because I'm too fat to sit in the emergency aisle, which I'm not blaming, like, the airline or anyone. Like, rules are rules, regulations are regulations. I'm happy to comply. This is a me thing. And then I sit down in my seat and I use the extender, whatever. And, you know, I was texting my husband for takeoff. And then when I landed, I was like, huh. I actually really don't feel that bad about it. Huh? And that surprised me because this whole time in my head, I've been worrying myself. I'm like, you should feel worse. You should feel bad about this. This should be your wake up call moment. You know how everyone talks about like having a wake up call moment that you need to lose weight. Like you weren't able to go on a roller coaster ride or you had to use the seatbelt extender. And I didn't have that. And then I was like worrying. I was like, is something wrong with me? Should mm-hmm. I be worrying why am I not making myself feel like crap over this? Why am I not crying? Why am I not wanting to die from embarrassment? And it was very interesting. And that's why I'm so conflicted on how to feel because I it was what it was. And I don't feel like shame or embarrassment. But then a little part of me has been so ingrained by society that mm-hmm. I should feel shame and embarrassment. So now I feel like something is wrong with me. And it's stepping back to looking like, I wonder if there's reverse body dysmorphia. Because when I look at myself, like, I know I'm fat, but I don't feel like I'm like, oh, my gosh, so fat. She belongs on a TLC show, right? (laughs) Run for your lives. Yeah, like, boom, (laughs) boom, boom, Michelin man coming. (laughs) But then the seatbelt doesn't fit. And I'm like, am I fatter than I think I am? And it just really, like, sent me into this Mm. weird, almost tailspin of, why am I not feeling like crap? And have I just graduated? Am I really like at a stage now where I can just accept my body? Would it discredit the entire experience if you can honestly say to yourself that if I wasn't on the Lexapro, I probably wouldn't be feeling this way, right? I wouldn't feel as confident or as sort of a matter of fact about it. Because that's what Lexapro does. And that's the beautiful thing of these drugs. I So I think that For me, Lexapro doesn't turn me into someone I'm not. It turns me into who I am. Mm -hmm. So it's I had a deficiency and it brings me up to where I'm supposed to be at. Um, And I think it allowed me to really look at this in a way and look at it in a healthy way and be like, you know what? People have different bodies. Not all vehicles are made for all bodies. This is a. An older one, I can tell by the sizing. And I've read I've read articles on how like airliner seats keep decreasing in size. The average woman in the U.S. is like a size 16 or something like that. And I think it's when you talk about this stuff and you talk about being overweight or these experiences, people know they're not alone. So I have seen other fat people ask for seatbelt extenders. I've seen these conversations and it's given me the power to know I'm not a weirdo outlier. I have nothing to be ashamed of. I'm just one of a group of people who sometimes needs some extra accommodations based on our body size. And it's not a moral failing. It doesn't make me a bad person. I'm not gross or shameful. I'm just built different, just like somebody else who maybe is super skinny naturally. That's beautiful. Thanks. I'm super I'm proud of you. I'm you're getting all tight in the chest for you, man. Thanks. <laughs> hey, Ebony, good morning. You're on the Bird Show. Hey, good morning. This is super inspiring. I want to commend you for even talking about it because I have felt this way, just even walking through the aisles and bumping into people. And I am in tears because I just think it is so beautiful for you to even be this transparent. So just just keep up the wonderful work. And everything that you said, I literally felt it in my soul. And I just really appreciate it. Thank you, Ebony. I appreciate that. That's awesome. I don't know how to end on that, except I'm just so happy for you. Thanks. I think if you're struggling, I think just take the mantra, it is what it is, and it doesn't mean you're a shameful, bad person. The Burt Show.